essay that I wrote in uh, 2015. Uh, it's called I Mercurius. I'm referring to my website archetypeinaction.com where this appears and it was published in May of 2015. I am curious. Everyone who publishes something on this website is a cave diver, just as Mercury was. The cave we explore is the unconscious, which is the greatest part of the human psyche. It is a vast territory, every bit as big as the external universe, because the universe is contained within it, but comparatively little is known about it. We know it makes our heart beat, our lungs breathe, our cells reproduce, in addition to sending us inscrutable messages through dreams and visions. But further explanation and research is needed, desperately needed. When I was in the second grade, my teacher taught us of our solar system. I found that first introduction to astronomy fascinating it started to explain what we often see in the night sky. I became conscious of some of the things humanity knew at the time, but as I've aged, I've learned how little we knew then, and how much there is yet to explore, especially in the unconscious. In 1996, astronomers turned the Hubble Space Telescope toward an empty patch of sky for 10 days, not knowing if the images would be blank when they finished. When they looked at their images, they found over 3,000 new galaxies. Repeating the experiment in 2004, they found no less than 10,000 new galaxies, each with hundreds of millions of stars never seen before. Regarding the unconscious universe, however, we know much less. Indeed, doctors Carl Jung and Sigmund Freud studied it for their entire lives and brought up many discoveries, but in the end, Dr. Jung himself admitted that we know nothing about the inner universe. He said, quote, The world hangs on a thin thread, and that is the psyche of man. Nowadays, we are not threatened by elementary catastrophes. There is no such thing as an H-bomb. That is all man's doing. We are the great danger. Psyche is the great danger. What if something goes wrong with the psyche? And so it is demonstrated in our days what the power of the psyche is of man. How important it is to know something about it, but we know no thing about it. And that was from, you can find this quote on Face to Face with Carl Jung, which was broadcast by the BBC in 1956. Dr. Jung's quote was a little over the top in the sense of the fact that he wrote an entire shelf of books on exactly what we do know, thanks in large part to his research. One of the concepts he presented was the existence of archetypes, which the ancient Greeks called gods. Ancient Greeks knew that they were energized by certain powers from time to time, and over thousands of years they differentiated these forces into categories they called gods. Nothing has changed for modern humanity, except today we call those forces archetypes and recognize them as constellations of the collective unconscious of humanity. They exist everywhere and in most other species besides humans. All one needs to do is watch one of the web cameras on sites like explore.org to see just how strong the mother archetype is in all species. All of us experience many archetypes bubbling up into our conscious thoughts during our lifetime, and all of us have a natural tendency to follow one or two of them throughout life. The primary ones that energize me are Mercury, Hermes, and Vulcan, Hephaestus. Mercury, Hermes, was the god who went into the deep unconscious and brought what he found into consciousness. He has also been called the messenger of the gods. Vulcan 
was the god who built things at his forge. My primary tendencies are quite obvious in looking at the Archetype in Action organization website as well as this YouTube channel, which I built and curate, where all of us try to bring unconscious information into consciousness. The role of writers, musicians, arch artists, dancers, singers, chefs, photographers, and all other creative people has been to help us understand something we do not know. Indeed, in order to make anything, you must first imagine it. This is not a rational task. Look around the room in which you are sitting at this very moment. With the exception of plants, everything that you can see first appeared in someone's fantasy. Even you would not be here if your father and mother had not imagined something, and all of those visions emerged from the unconscious psyche. Logic and rational thought can take you just so far, but in order to experience meaning, you have to first imagine something and feel it, too. This is why something like the Hubble Ultra Deep Field video is so important. Someone can tell you about it until they're blue in the face, but until you have watched the Ultra Deep Field video, you cannot appreciate the value of what the astronomers did. It is truly profound. In the same sense, a piece of art, as abstract as a Pollock, has tremendous value, but you cannot possibly understand that until you have experienced it for yourself. In general, I am not hugely moved by paintings in art galleries, but when I saw Jackson Pollock, one, number 31, 1950, in real life, I spontaneously burst into tears. To this day, I don't know why, but it gave me new respect, even love, for his work. You cannot get the same result from looking at a postcard or online image of the painting, and your experience will necessarily be different from mine. And as most of you know, um, I since do know what caused me to break into tears, and there are, there's video on this YouTube channel uh, which shows the moment when I realized what it meant to me. And that certainly came from the unconscious. Was Pollock painting a portrait of his own soul? Maybe, but if so, he was painting a portrait of your soul as well. But you will never understand that unless you see one of these paintings in real life. Then you will know, and your life will be changed because of your knowing. Try it. Uh, the same thing happened to me, by the way, with uh, Monet. I used to see her little postcards of Monet lily ponds, for example, and I always said, eh, you know, so what? But when we had a Monet exhibit here in Baltimore at the Walters Art Gallery, I said, oh my God, <laughs> it was amazing. Even God is found in the unconscious psyche and nowhere in the known physical universe to date. When Dr. Jung, the son of a Swiss Reformed pastor, was asked if he believed in God, he said, I have no need to believe, I know. He went further in his writing, quote, but religious statements without exception have to do with the reality of the psyche and not with the reality of the physis. That's from Answer to Job, paragraph 752. When rationalistic patriarchs want to cut us off from the arts by canceling art and music classes and defending the arts in general, isn't it time for us to fight back? They are only manipulating us by denying our humanity, not to mention cutting us off from the ingenuity that made America the dominant economic power it is. And I would, as an aside, tell a story of Winston Churchill. During World War II, he was asked why he was continuing to fund the British Museum. And he said, well, if we don't fund the British Museum, then what are we fighting for? How would the world be changed if we all understood every religious idea of every religion is absolutely true as a psychic fact? 
What do you think that means to you? What does it mean to the rest of us? Do you believe or do you know? In the end, every painting, every piece of music, every religious event of whatever kind is a direct communication from the unconscious of the artist or organizers of religion directly into the unconscious of the rest of us. No number of critics, describers, scientists, or rationalists will ever be able to explain their meaning to you. Only you can decide their meaning. If you don't experience them, you will never know. Thank you.